Hi everyone, for this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the different types of tissues. As you can see, we're gonna have several different learning outcomes for this module, but some of them are short and some of them are a little bit longer, like the epithelial tissue and connective tissue are a little bit longer, but most of them are pretty short. Remember when we discussed in module one, learning outcome number two, the level of body organization, and then we talked about tissues there. It was the level right after the cellular level, where the first level was the chemical level, where the atoms came together to form molecules, and then the molecules came together to form the cells, and the cells came together to form the tissues. Well, this is the level we are at right now for this module. Therefore, the definition of tissues will be when you have specialized cells that are coming together to form structure. And this structure is the tissue. Now the cells need an environment to be able to grow and perform its functions. And this environment is called the extracellular or outside of the cell, like the name says, extra outside of the cell environment which will surround these specialized cells. And histology, like we talked already about, histology is the study of these cells and their extracellular substances. And we already covered this definition as well when we discussed the forms of studying anatomy and physiology in module one, learning outcome number one. So if you need a review, make sure to go back to this material because it has been covered before. There are three main characteristics of tissue with regards to their consistency. It can be hard, it can be semi-solid, or it can be liquid. Also, tissue will be formed by several different cell types, not just one, which can sometimes be a little bit confusing. In addition, the cells are arranged in different ways depending on the tissue and also depending on the structure of the extracellular material. The extracellular material will be the one that will basically define the consistency of the tissue. Therefore, if it is solid or hard, if it's semi-solid or if it's liquid. We mentioned on the previous slide how the study of tissues is termed histology. And if there is anything wrong with a patient, the doctor that examines the tissues and cells under a microscope and tries to make an accurate diagnosis is called a pathologist. So these study methods we also covered previously. But the removal of a sample of tissue for analysis is termed biopsy. And it can either be removed surgically or through a needle in case that it's a liquid tissue. According to the structure and function, body tissues can be classified into four different categories. You're going to have the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. This image shows the general example of all four, and on the next slide, I will explain them to you in more details. Here we have the four main tissue types which are the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. Let's focus first on the epithelial tissue, which is going to contain, like I said, different cell types, even though here it is only showing one cell type. And this epithelial tissue will cover the body surfaces. What do you call the tissue that covers your body surface? You call it your skin. And it also lines hollow organs, body cavities, and ducts. In addition to all this, it does form glands. So to summarize, we can say that the epithelial tissue will form the skin, it will form the lining of internal organs, and it will form glands that are going to be used for secretion of certain substances, like mucus. Due to the fact that this tissue covers body surface, it will interact with the external environment, as the skin does. And because it lines hollow organs and body cavities, it will interact also with the internal environment. 
Moving on to connective tissue. This tissue is the one that will protect and support the body and all of its organs. There are various types of connective tissue and we will discuss them when we cover this learning outcome specifically for module two. A few of the functions of this important tissue is that it will bind organs together through the fibers that are present here. You can see we have the reticular fiber, elastic fibers, and collagen fibers. It will store energy reserves as fat. See the presence of these adipocytes, which are fat cells right over here. And it helps also to provide the body with immunity to disease-causing organisms due to the different immunological cells that are located in this tissue. And on this image, we see right over here a macrophage, which is an example of these immune cells that will protect our body from foreign organisms and that are present in the connective tissue. Next, we have the muscle tissue or muscular tissue, which is composed of cells that are specialized for contraction and generation of force. In the process of contraction and causing force, it will generate heat as well, which is important to keep the body warm and contribute to homeostasis. Then we have the nervous tissue, which is our last type of epithelial tissue, which is important to detect changes in a variety of conditions, either inside or outside of the body and it will respond to these different conditions, generating what we call an electrical signal, which can also be called a nerve action potential or nerve impulses. And these nerve impulses, when stimulated, they will activate, for example, muscular contractions and glandular secretions. So when you are nervous for an interview, for example, your muscles become tense, contracted, and you might start to sweat. So this means that your sweat glands are being activated by the nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue and most types of connective tissue except cartilage, bone, and blood are more general in nature and will have a wide distribution in the body. These tissues are components of most body organs and they have a wide range of structure and function. And we will look at the epithelial tissue and connective tissue in some details in this module. And the other two, the muscular and the nervous tissues, will be covered on a separate module later on in the semester.